There we go. Recording is going. Perfect. Sweet. Um, so first things, I'm going to go through the email really quick uh, because one, I may not communicate well sometimes and two, people don't read emails. So uh, first things first, uh, the pi we're going to have a pilot's meeting every day, uh, 10 o'clock to answer questions, debrief from the previous day. Um, it's going to be by the trailer and I'll show you the map where everything is. So uh, we'll, that'll be good. Launches, um, we're going to do standard launch procedures, not racing launch procedures. Uh, but remember that if your canopy is closed and you're hooked up, that means your checklist is done and you're ready to go. Um, it's going to be rudder waggle and wing runner single signal are mandatory. Uh, one of the other things is only experienced wing runners are allowed to run wings. Uh, no taking new people, putting them on a wing and say, grab this and go. That's caused a few problems. We will have two tow planes there. Uh, just so everybody knows, $55 for all tows, and they're up to 2,000 feet uh, due to the number of participants so we can get a quick turnaround. We'd appreciate if you stick to this, and if you go higher, it will cost more. Uh, $5 camp fee on GTA days. $10 on non-GTA days. That's to cover the cost of the tow planes and tow pilots to uh, additionally. Please make the checks out to MGSA. Mitch will be handling paying the non-MGSA tow plane. Uh, please make sure you pay up before you leave. Badge and record attempts from highest to lowest uh, distance will be having launch priority. It's the reason for the camp. We'll work around this. Um, the other thing that we want to do is make sure MGSA, since it's their camp, um, that they get that kind of priority within regards to that. Don't think it'll be a problem, but just so we state it. The GTA contest will be called with a grid time on the days of flying GTA. Pilots meeting for GTA is gonna be at 9.30 and launch operations may halt to get the GTA racers in the sky at the same time. Don't know exactly how many, we may have five or six of us flying GTA when we're there. Um, and the last thing is if somebody is that you know is going that didn't get the email, didn't get the meeting, make sure they contact Patrick so we understand all who's gonna be there. So this is the the just the email. Any questions about that part of it? Um, I'm going to show field operations and talk through some other points. Uh, I've got two after questions, this. Michael. Yep. One is, uh, if you're ready and the canopy's closed, is the tow plane going to take out slack before you give a thumbs up and raise your wing? That is an interesting question. Let's clarify that. Uh, when we get down there, it should be that they take off slack um, as they're, uh, what do I want to say, as they're moving forward, but I'm I'm concerned of the rope, the tow rope hookup and the glider moving forward. So I'd rather that we operate by the standard procedure of raise the wing than take out the slack. Yeah, I agree with the latter. And that was an issue last year. Okay. The slack was being taken out. The wing was down. And maybe even the glider started moving a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, Slack out. I'll make sure that I bring that up at the 10 o'clock pilots meeting every day. Okay. And, and the last question is, again, on the tow heights, um, if somebody wants to go above 2,000 feet, they need to do that outside of the GTA window, correct? Because all tows within that launch window are going to be 2,000 feet. So what's going to happen is GTA folks are going to grid their gliders in one big group and they'll be at whatever appointed time. We'll say grid time, let's just say 1230. Launch time will be one o'clock. What we'll do is we'll have that set that grid up. So all those gliders are in one group and launch everything in front of them get everybody launched and then according to whatever they're launching we're trying to say everybody go to 2000 if somebody in front of them needs to go to 3000 or whatever fine uh we'll do that once the gta 
starts launching, we all take 2,000 foot toes. And then it's back to normal operations. Hopefully everybody goes to a 2,000, learns how to do it and comes back if they can't, um, or they ask for a higher toe. Okay, when do they ask for the higher toe? When do they tell the toe pilot? They Is should tell that to you off. off. They should tell, yes, they should tell you that before takeoff. I don't, I don't want to be on the toe and, and at uh, 1800 feet, somebody's going to tell me I'm going to 3000. Okay. Um, Good point. I will make that a uh, point to talk about at the meeting. Cool. Thank you for that. Okay. Any other questions on this first part? Okay, I'm going to uh, share the, uh, actually, let me get it showing here. <clears throat> this is going to be uh, compliments of Mitch Deutsch, uh, a diagrammed aerial view of the airport. It came with the information I sent you in that packet. Can you see the detail or do I need to zoom in more? Looks great yeah. to me. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in one piece. Now uh, I'm going to run through what we're about here. Um, so just bear with me as I go through all this. 624 is NOTAM closed for the duration of the camp and the contest. Most of the time we take off on six. Obviously wind changes will take off on two, four. The thing to remember about this is we have an active runway, 10 to eight going here. We always need to be looking out, especially in the mornings for active traffic. We have ag planes coming in and going out. And as they're coming in, let's say they're landing 10, sometimes they're not much more than 500 feet above the deck. They stay low. They're supposed to be on the radio, but we act as if they're not. So everybody, it's up to everybody's uh, to look both ways, make sure that we don't have anything taking off and make those calls as appropriate. As you get going, do look left and right. Just take, a, take another peek because we're going to cross this right on takeoff. <laughs> When we're landing, don't stop in the intersection. It's fine to cross, but then make a call that says you're going to cross 10 to 8 and make it early um, on your uh, final pattern. These are nice, big, long runways. If we get a day where we've got a lot of gliders raining out of the sky, please don't do what they call long bomber run uh, uh, finals. Try to keep your base tight. There is more than enough room on this runway and you can roll off. And I'm going to talk about that right now. On When you're landing 2-4, you can roll off all the way up to uh, right before 10 8 I recommend everybody walk it because you can get little chuck holes. Who knows what creature has de decided to go in there. But this side, the left side of 2-4, is landable. The right side is landable in some places, but go take a nice walk, look where it is, um, but land and pull off. There are no lights on 2, 4, and 6. There are lights on 10, 2, 8. So do look out for those. These closed runways, uh, or this closed runway right here, I wouldn't, I'd rather land in the grass than this because there can be potholes and chunks of rock, but I've walked it to see if there's anything there. Um, and even this taxiway could be landable in an emergency. But again, we're going to try land two, four, stop short or pull off. If operations are clear, nobody's taken off 10 to eight, you can roll down into here as long as there's no, there are no gliders off to the side and pull off down here. Um, it's a lot bigger of an area than it looks. We stage, if we're gonna take off on six, we try and stage on the right-hand side of the runway. You can go on the left side. 
And in fact, if the day is uh, looking good, we actually can pull some of the gliders right out onto the runway, but we prefer, we'll, we'll call kind of a, a starting time for toes and we'd like to stage from the side of the runway and kind of grid everybody that's gonna fly that day so we can work out priorities. Uh, for parking, oh, I'm sorry, uh, patterns. Stay off of uh, Cordial Town. So that means left patterns into six, right patterns into two, four, left patterns into 10, right patterns into two, eight. Any questions on that so far? Okay. Uh, this may not be the right time, but <clears throat> will there be uh, some discussion on road break um, strategies on takeoff as far as, because I've never flown down there, as far as um, uh, low altitude road break uh, places to go off of the uh, departure end? What I would recommend, and this is, where we've been with this, we should, unless it's a super hot day and a really weak plane, you should be able to get to your 200 foot. If you're taking off on six, there ain't much over there. There's some stuff over here to the, uh, just to the left of the runway. I would check Google and then drive it um, because who knows what's been built and, and that sort of thing. The nice thing is, it's this is a huge runway so you you've got a lot of time and which also takes me to you know if if you drop a wing and you're starting to go sideways please please pull the release we'd rather have you pull the release uh go again i've had just in the short time this year i've seen three different uh times where gliders taking off and they should have pulled the release uh one caused damage the other to could have easily. So please uh, be on uh, your release. Um, the other thing about this, Mitch put this nice dark red right here at the intersection. Don't, the, there's always kind of a, a drop here that you can break your gear door, uh, ding a wing if you hit it wrong. So when you get out here, take a look at it and it's, it's pretty uh, steep right here. And the other thing too is this runway is probably two inches above a older macadam uh, uh, asphalt. So if you put your wing off the side of the runway, let's just say when you're gridding, do look out because you're gonna have a little dip and I've seen people scrape wingtips um, because they were too close to the edge. Any other questions and did that answer your concern on rope break? Cool. Yes, thank you. Sorry, my microphone's muted. Oh, no worries. I saw your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, the other thing here, uh, coming in and out of the airport, we wanna keep the airport friendly. So we have this policy and procedure. And again, read what I sent you for the contest. It's got really good information about airport operations. When you drive in here, make a button hook left. Look out. It's a it's kind of a small gate. There's a gas pump here. Stay on this side of the gas pump and this side of the FBO. Drive down here between the open hangers. Drive on down here. Remember that all times, even though 624 is uh, a closed runway for us, this is an active taxiway uh, so people can go take off on 10. We've been, you know, uh, assembling our gliders along here. And we've had jets, uh, you know, business class jets come down here and need to take off. So don't park your RV here. Uh, don't leave anything unattended because it is an active taxiway. Parking for your gliders. Uh, for the whole week of the camp, we're going to fill up this space here. And then you can start filling up this space here. Some people might grab uh, these spots over here. Look out because where I'm drawing this line here where it says open class using water ballast, there's a drop off on the hill. So when you're landing 2-4, don't go over the end of the runway. 
there's a nice chain link fence that'll stop you at the bottom of the hill, but look out. And same thing is if you're going to uh, assemble over here, look at where you're going to be putting things. We ask that by Wednesday night of the following week, you'll have either transitioned for those of us that are flying uh, the region five, like I'll have to move mine from over here over to the sports class area or uh, get your stuff and go or park away from this area uh, because of the uh, contest people coming in. I think that covers it for the top-down map, uh, especially those of you that have been there before. Is there anything I've missed um, in terms of airport operational? Michael, if if we're all staged for um, taking off on runway six, mm -hmm. and you're up and there's a whole bunch of gliders on the runway right and take off and you have to relight, what, what's the recommended? <laughs> Thank you. That I was like, I forgot about relights. So one of the, the things that we can do, uh, and the accepted procedure when it's not really, really busy, is you just come back and land to for wind permitting. If you're going to come back and you have to land six, give the grid altitude. Don't come in low over six. If you're going to come in and you're kind of worried about your altitude, land 10. So if you're out over here, land 10. If you're out over this way, get your glider down, do it safely. But remember that you've got a bunch of gliders here. Don't worry, we'll come down and pick you up. You've got all this runway here. You've got 10, you've got two eight. Now, during the contest, I'm going to, uh, and we'll, we'll discuss this when we get the camp going and see how many people we got, especially during GTA. During the contest, our normal operation is if you need a relight, you come back and you land 2-8 and you pull off here, they send a cart down, we get you back up to the grid and relaunch it. On a day where we're only launching 10 gliders or something, it's fine to land back on two, four uh, wind permitting or try and land 10 is the preference instead of yeah. trying to come back over the grid. Actually last year, when uh, there were relights, they landed on two eight and we pulled them out from there. They were not moved, they stayed there and the tow plane came and picked them up and we took off on two eight with them. Oh, during the contest? Yes. Okay. Um, I know that's how they do it in the contest for the camp. If uh, you folks that are, if that ends up being the way we want to do it and it works better that way, that's fine. The only uh, problem we might have is ever, all of us are going to be volunteering as wing runners. So that means somebody has got to get down there to run the wing for the read life. Yes, there was, there was always a golf cart that went down there to yep. pull the glider on the runway and, uh, yeah, that, that, that's uh, how, how it was done in the, during the contest last year. Yep. So um, during camp, we do land 10, pull off to the right with this where the little swale is. Sorry, I'm pointing with my finger. Um, and it, it, if we're just not launching a ton of gliders, that's perfectly fine. We'll talk about it uh, each day and I'll kind of get a consensus if we want to do the two eight thing. Like I said, it's just a matter of making sure we have somebody be able to get down there and run a wing for a relight. Uh, okay. That's it for the airport operations pattern. I'm just looking at my additional notes here. Active taxiway note I'm closed. So one of the things I'm going to talk about, especially if you haven't been here, is the heat. Um, you got to stay hydrated, stay out of the sun, which means you need to be rigged by nine o'clock. Don't come out at nine or 10 o'clock and start rigging. It'll kick your ass. Um, it's really hot. It's really humid. So please, please get out there early. Um, you know, get a quick breakfast in, but rig early. The flip side of this is when you're done rigging and you're going to go cross country, have your trailer hooked up and ready to go with your vehicle. Also, we will have a sign-up sheet 
um, where everybody's contact information will be on that. We have no retrieve desk, but what we'll do is um, you have this list, take a picture of it with your phone, take it with you and we'll work land outs. The preference is talk to somebody that says, hey, if I'm down, I'll come get you, that sort of thing. I'd like to be able to use that checklist at the end of the day to make sure everybody made it home. So on that checklist will be, did you make it back? Check your name off so we don't have to think you're still out in the field somewhere. Sign-in sheet. Uh, the CTAF is 123.05. After you get established, just to keep the radio chatter down, we'd like to go one, two, three, three uh, for, you know, as long as you're up flying and you want to communicate, talk to a buddy who you're going to go fly with or that sort of thing. One, two, three, three is usually pretty clear. If it isn't and it's changed up or something, we'll get uh, another frequency. The other thing is we request that we do something that we do in contests, and that is if we're within five miles of the airport, try and thermal left. Uh, get everybody going the same way. It makes it easier for the tow pilots. Um, and again, this is like we've got a camp here where we could feasibly have launched maybe 20 some gliders at one time. Um, so just like to keep things a little bit safe. So you may get a gentle reminder about thermaline left. Um, doesn't mean that, you know, if you're down at 1500 feet and you're scratching, you got to switch it up, but just remember that. Tie down your trailers. This is the other thing I've ha uh, had somebody ask, should I box my glider at night? The storms in Cordial come up quick and they can be pretty violent when they come up that quick. I recommend that you box your glider, but you do have to have your trailer tied down, especially around those gliders that might be tied out. If I know the weather is really going to be nice, I'll, I'll tie out, but do tie down your trailer. And again, have the ties taken off um, and have that trailer ready to go if you need to get a retrieve. <laughs> That is it for my notes that I have. What have I missed? What questions do we have? Michael, if, if I could add something, uh, I've known Bill Drury for over 50 years. And even though he's a close friend, uh, he and I were down in Cordial together. And as a mentor, he told me, Pat, if you want me to retrieve for you, um, you need to make sure everything's ready to go. And, and he included making sure the trailer was ready to go and it, that it's untied, that it's closed up, that all the equipment's on there. So all he had to do was get in and start the car and go on the retreat. And I didn't practice that with our K-21 flight. And I apologize a lot about that and probably will get heat for it for quite some time, but it was an oversight. So uh, I it was a fun retrieve and I appreciated the workout. Yeah, well, it wasn't. We didn't do it right, so I'm not going to make cool. that mistake again. I guarantee it. Cool. So, just a word to everyone else: if you're going to want somebody to retrieve, you know, do your job to make sure everything's ready to go. Yep. I blame you, Pat, for every you bit see. of that. I blame you. <laughs> Hi, Chip. Hey. So, uh, one of the other things that I did want to mention is if you ever intend to race, come race at GTA. If you've done cross country and you've done your silver, come show up for GTA. If for nothing, sit in on the meeting. Um, come, even if you don't want to be in the race, come fly the task. Uh, you've got people out there. You can call on the radio with newbie questions. Uh, it's very laid back. It's very fun. Uh, anybody that takes GTA too seriously will probably get spanked a little bit, but this is, and it might be our very first GTA race of the year, by the way, given the, the horrid weather we've had. So come do that. The other thing I recommend is if you have the means, uh, I can't say enough about learning at a regional, sitting in at the pilot meetings, the safety meetings, the wealth of knowledge. Um, it's fantastic. So uh, if you can hang out and be part of just observing the regional race, it's fantastic. 
just to put in a plug there. Other questions, comments? Chip, did I miss anything that is a fear that you've had that you can think of or stuff that lessons from Cordial? I've got 10 minutes yet. Gosh, no, I thought you did just such a nice job, Michael. I, I thought it was wonderful. I, I did have one question that wasn't for all, it's for all of us is this map that you're showing, I haven't seen this in the Cordial packet. Have they got us designated by classes? Where did so, you get this? so this, there was a packet that Chris sent out that was three attachments. One was the pilot kit document. One was Mitch's this, the other document and it was RV parking. Um, I'll send it back out to you. I, I, well, I can I send it. I just probably didn't get to all through all of it. I was just looking yeah. at it. But, but they are separating good. us uh, for tie downs because the open class needs big stuff. And then the 15 meters uh, need the water. And the only water fill station is down here at the ass end of uh, two, four. No, I thought you did an excellent job. I mean, it's really very, I, I appreciate all the time and effort you put into the presentation. I, I cool. would just reiterate two things is, is I don't think that Michael can state strongly enough at how hot it gets. So uh, that advice was given to me early on to try and get rigged before seven and then come back and enjoy your breakfast. And I tell you, it'll change your life because it really is miserably hot. And the other one was on the rope breaks that because of the heat, the level and the air density, if you do have a rope break, the odds are pretty good that you're gonna be able to go straight ahead or take a, take a turn back. You won't have to worry about going forward, but Michael's correct about walking the area. So I, I, I'm always concerned about rope breaks also. So whoever asked that question was a was also a really good question, but uh, I, it's a, I think it's a pretty user-friendly for the rope break. Cool. Thanks, Chip. Yeah. Um, about uh, the heat, I'm going to extend this a little bit. Uh, right now, there's Hartley, me, Bill Drury, uh, for medical issues. Here's the thing. If you see somebody pass out, like drop, or they're incoherent, first thing is call 911. Don't go running around, spending five or 10 minutes looking for one of us. Um, get the person, get get uh, somebody on the way, get EMS going if, if somebody just doesn't make it. There have been times where I've walked up to a couple people and said, why don't we go over, sit in the trailer and cool down? Um, and we need to be friendly enough and let our egos go enough that anybody should be able to approach us if we looked a little ragged out uh, when we're down there. We need to check in. Uh, we're brothers in the air and pay attention to the people next to you. Um, I think that's it. Anything else? Anybody else got some items? Wow, this one went smoother, maybe because I practiced Tuesday. Sweet. Uh, Pat, you said you had something about the tow plane you wanted to address. Yeah, I'll keep this short. Jeff Wright has volunteered to ferry the, the Pawnee down to Cordial from Monroe, but he needs to head back on Thursday, right after he does maybe a half a day of towing. I think Bill Drury is going to cover the second half of that day. But we need to get Jeff ultimately to, he wants to go to uh, Monroe and then pick up his car and then head to Auburn, which is about a two, two and a half hour drive. So we're looking at options and there are all the options right now are ugly, but one option is if somebody can drive his car from Monroe down to Cordill, uh, excuse me, on the 25th, they can get a free ride down because they're not going to pay for gas. And then we've got people going back on uh, after two days, after three days, after four days, so we can get that person back. But positioning his car down in Cordial is seems like a good option for us, unless somebody in an airplane can fly him uh, back to Monroe. So that's a challenge we're facing right now. So, Pat, I'm sorry, when you say Thursday, you mean a week from today, Thursday, not June 1st, Thursday? A week from today. So, 
he the first day of our camp is Thursday the 25th and yeah. he, he is going to ferry to three Lima down early morning to start towing in the morning weather permitting so okay. you know he needs to start heading back to Monroe in the afternoon and on the, on the 25th on the 25th and uh <clears throat> You know, so we've had one guy, uh, Jimmy, uh, has offered to actually, uh, if if uh, if he'd drive his car down, if Jeff would drive his car down from Cordial, Jimmy offered to to drive him back up to Cordial so he could then fly the tow plane down, and then Jimmy was going to drive back down, so he was going to volunteer to make a round trip in the morning, but that's a a lot of driving, and he's only going to be down there two days. So I, you know, that's not a good option. Uh, really if, if Patrick, if, if, not, if everything falls through and we don't get this, let's just make sure he's, we pony up for an Uber and, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And we're looking at everything from rental cars. One okay. way. Yeah. Sweet. So we're exploring all that. I'm just okay, trying cool. to be the least painful. If we can get one of our people to step up and do something, you know, to help volunteer, that's what we're looking for. We need, yeah. we need, we need a, we need a airplane is what we need. That's the easiest way to do this. Well, we, I, Chip, you, you want to reach out to Chris Chisholm? Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm going to, uh, let me ask around actually, if not Chris, I, I, maybe I can talk Caltax into doing it. Let me see. Cause that's, if we can get someone to, who wants a little airtime and we pay for the, the fuel. Right. Yep. And also, Chip, uh, put in something to Chris Ruff. I don't, he'll be down I, I, for- It's funny you say, because I got to call Chris Ruff anyway, because I don't know about you guys, but the GTA waypoints that he has on the Waypoint Exchange, there are no cup files on there. Okay, I'll go, I'm going to go check that right after this, because so I have last year. Because he has the updated, yep. okay. he, has the, uh, he has the updated files for official GTA south of Atlanta that okay. he did on, but there's no cup files. They're all number files. So, okay. yeah, so let's, I can't make any promises, Pat, but I, let me let me see if I can beat the bushes. And, I, and I'm gonna see, uh, I'm getting my annual done tomorrow on the 20th. So let's see if I can come up with something. It's yeah, and if, if he would want to ferry two, three Lima down in, in the morning and, and, you know, the greatest thing would be if he'd be willing to tow that day. Who, Chris Chisholm? Yeah. Yeah, Chisholm. Okay, let me, yeah, yeah, he might. Yeah, I bet he'd be very excited about that, to be honest. And he doesn't have as far to go. He just goes up back up to uh, uh, Peach State. <laughs> I'll call him right now after this. Is, 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 did Bill get rid of Thin Mint? Uh, Thin Mint's gone, Chip. Oh, no. How'd that happen? Sorry, by the way, uh, this meeting's going to end in one minute, 30 seconds. Yeah, is there I, I, I will, I will, Pat, and I'll, I'll, let me, see, uh, no promises, but I didn't realize that was an issue. Let me see if I can find something. Okay, cool. Hey, John, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys from Zephyr Hills, buddy. I'm sorry, what was the question? I said, I'm looking forward to seeing the Zephyr Hill boys. It'd be nice to That's see you right. guys. We should be there. Yeah, I look forward to it. All right, guys. Uh, Thank I'll you, cool. Michael Abel. Thank yep, you, Michael. You're welcome. Really, really excellent. Cool. Uh, um, hit us up with any questions. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.